I'm David M. Masters. I'm the author of The Psychopath's Toolkit and How to Deal with a Psychopath. And uh, interesting that my background, you know, I've I been coaching, training for my whole life, you know, since high school. And I didn't really think there were bad people out there. And then uh, I was very shocked when I, when like the universe threw me into a situation where I was face to face with the psychopath. And I'm like, and, and it, as much as I hate to go there, um, I heard, you know, judges and attorneys and law enforcement saying that, you know, there are, these people are actually defined as being evil. And, um, and I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but maybe the fact that they have no conscience, um, some people say no soul, uh, maybe, they, maybe they are, you know. Maybe they are, it, it w you wouldn't question someone's being evil. I mean, on an extreme, we know, we read stories about people who abduct people and, you know, cut them up and put them in a the freezer and eat them. That would definitely be an extreme and we would consider that person evil. There has to be a spectrum. Right? Yes, there is a spectrum. We'll talk about that. And so most victims of psychopaths don't even know they're a victim of a psychopath until it's too late. So because these are very charming individuals, uh, they really get under your skin. And, uh, and they're the people that we love and admire on one hand until they have shown their true colors and then it's debilitating. So I'm David M. Masters. I'm a lead coach, trainer, transfiguration specialist at St. Paul's University. And you can find more information about me at davidmmasters.com. And like I said, I've been doing this work for a long time. Psychopath work for about 20 years. And we're looking for instructors to, do, to teach this course to other victims. So, and also to train therapists because there is no really good training for therapists who work with psychopath victims. Um, <coughs> what you see normally when you come into an office, and before 20 years ago, if you came into my office, you'd be in the same boat. If you came 20 years ago, or over 20 years ago, you come into my office and you say, oh, I'm being attacked by a psychopath. I would be like, oh, really? Let's talk about this. Why do you feel like this person's a psychopath? Why do you feel like you're being attacked? Why, y you know the, r the routine, right? So, <clears throat> because it was the furthest thing from my mind to think that there's actually people out there like this, you know? So, it's obviously a misconception of some kind. And especially if it's, if someone said that they were like married to, or in business with somebody, or related to my brother, my aunt, my uncle. How could that even be? That's not the world I live in. I live in this world <laughs> with a big old family, and I love these guys more than anything. And um, I have three kids. That's, that's a group. Yeah, that's right. This, this is my cybersecurity specialist right here, my son. He's the oldest. It's my actress daughter. She was just in a couple movies that rolled out at the theaters uh, this year. So not that long ago. Echo is one movie, in case you get a chance to see her in it. And uh, Friday, the, the latest Friday the 13th. She's like Seattle's scream queen, so she <laughs> <laughs> she, most of the time when she's on the screen, she's covered in blood and screaming. So that's her, that's her gig. <laughs> and her sister, JC, she's the... Uh, she is the, the more wholesome one. I'm, I shouldn't say wholesome. I shouldn't say wholesome. I sh we never see her covered in blood. But <laughs> <laughs> she has had her own punk rock band, and she's an artist in many different uh, disciplines, and she helps run the Girl Scouts of America. So good, good guys. And uh, like when I'm dealing with a psychopath, a psychopath attacks me, that's one thing. And he goes after these guys, it's a different thing, right? 
It's on like Donkey Kong. So this is the spectrum. And we were talking about that a little bit earlier, right? So a psychopath on this end of the spectrum is going to drive down the street and see a rodent crossing the road and swerve to bump bump. That's, that's on this end. On this end is the, you know, you got people in the freezer, right? So everywhere in between there. And we're dealing with primarily in this episode that you all have joined here, predatory psychopaths in particular, and they're right about here. And there's a lot of them. There is a lot of them, but there aren't as many as you might think. So your friends, like if you've been victimized by a psychopath, your friends probably have not. So they have no frame of reference. They think you're being ridiculous. Just like it took me 15 years to find out that there were people out there like this, right? I didn't run across any firsthand. I didn't even know. So you just got to do the best you can with what you have. So these are the people we're talking about. We're not talking about the rest of this spectrum today. And those people... <laughs> Those people are on the dark side. They're on the dark side of the, of the uh, spectrum. And so the first question is, when you've been victimized by a psychopath, is why me? What, you know, and everybody here has asked that question. Why did I get singled out to be the victim here? And in my practice, when someone comes in who's been a victim, um, you know, I'm as grateful as possible that this person has been honored with the position of being a psychopath victim. Sounds crazy, but anyone else, anyone else besides this person could not have survived the attack by that psychopath. That's a very special person. <laughs> this is somebody who, who has the wherewithal to make it because anyone else, they would have taken their own life by now. It's that serious. And so, so these people are actually blessed. Now you can't, you can't feel it, you know, like Mark and Lynetta were saying earlier. You know, in, when you're in the, in the muck and you're covered in blood, it, you can't see it. But, but you really are blessed by this. And there are other people out there who really need to get this information from you. Because no matter how much school a person goes to, you cannot make that connection with a patient unless you've been in those shoes and you've worn those shoes. And you know what it feels like. When you tell your story of what happened to you, people are not going to be able to understand what you're saying if they don't know what you've been through. Doesn't make any sense. Nobody believes it's true. And so we're gonna tell you how to deal with a psychopath. But before we do that, we gotta find out who they are. Now there are probably a hundred attributes of psychopaths, and I've narrowed it down to these six. If you, if you find these six characteristics in one person, there's a pretty good chance you're dealing with a psychopath. And if, uh, if you're not, if it's not a psychopath, it's still a bad guy, right? <laughs> so we would take the same steps, no matter, like Daniel says, what kind of toxic individual that might be. So, so let's take a look at these. Do these, if there are people in here who have been victimized, uh, do you know, Anyone who's shared all of these characteristics? Have you ever known anyone who's charismatic? How charismatic? Can I get an example of someone who's like been able to uh, be really charismatic and influential in a crowd of people? Anybody? Super schmoozers. Super schmoozers. Can I get the microphone so people <laughs> online can hear? <laughs> this, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I want to hear it. <laughs> and, and this is from your experience, right? So you've seen this firsthand. Yeah, so Not, you, want, you want it to be a couple inches 
Not just on TV now. No. Okay. 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 No, so. Bring my clothes. Really close? Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Ice cream cone. Okay, okay. So, like a prom king, and, mm -hmm. you know, 15 years later, you live in the same town, and everybody loves you, and your whole, like, the, it's just, everyone loves you, and that's the charismatic thing. He's a t total jerk, mm -hmm. but everyone loves you, because you have played football in high school, and you're the prom king, and you, like, hold up appearances. Yeah. And behind closed doors, you abuse your wife and kids mm -hmm. for years. Yep, yep. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. And people like him. And that, Why do people like him? They love him. <laughs> they love, <laughs> we <laughs> love <laughs> these guys. We love Anyone else want to share an example of charisma amongst someone who might be of the psychopathic persuasion? How about smart? Now, Daniel's the smartest guy I know, but I, you know, he's fully vetted. He's not a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these guys are really intelligent. They really know how to, how to do stuff. Th th this is what makes them like really great con men, because they can, they can conceive of a plan and follow it through and, and, and do some real uh, damage. Uh, you, I don't know if anyone in here has suffered financially from one, but that... That really is a, a technique. There's, yeah. You see, a, oh, you want to share? I had a, actually, my second husband was extremely charismatic and mm -hmm. really smart. Mm -hmm. And, but, and I, I, I just was like, wow. I mean, I thought he was just amazing. Yeah. But he's also a heroin addict and mm, a many of them are institution. He was institutionalized. So mm -hmm. we got married, and he spent mm, half of the time he was in prison. So do I know um, that guy? Huh? Do I know him? <laughs> no. <I'm just> <laughs> okay, yeah. And um, but he's gorgeous, and everybody uh -huh. like when he talked in the room, everyone mm -hmm. was quiet because yeah. they all listened. Mm -hmm. He was like. He always had his Ray-Bans on, and he mm. swaggered, and, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, we get it. Oh, oh we could sure. talk to yeah. anyone. Ever. I, he, he was running, like, after a month of living in our apartments, he, mm -hmm. he got to be the manager and got all the keys to everybody's apartment. Whoa. <laughs> That's, and would steal <laughs> from everybody. Of but... <laughs> they were like so taken by him because he was so charming. Oh, you got a special one. Good I for got you. a special You're one. You're a very special person. <laughs> and, and I was head over heels, could oh, yeah, not yeah. live without this man. Oh, I was like, just thank you for making totally it taken. For that. Yeah. And I recovered. Yeah, very <laughs> good job. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else before oh, we, we. Oh, yeah, one more. They're also just very good at playing the system. Oh yes, nope, that's for sure. Mo like, if you're, g we'll talk about that a little later. But if you're going to use law enforcement, they usually have law enforcement wrapped around their fingers. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no feelings. This is really interesting. This is why people think they have no soul, right? Because they can do stuff that nobody else can do without blinking an eye. Um, and actually, this is why these. Uh, people are, are um, used by our government because there are many jobs that the rest of us could not do that these guys are experts at because they have no feelings. So we need these guys actually in our society. It's crazy. So, but there are places where they can use their powers for good and instead of evil. So... So that's good. No feelings. Any examples of someone who did something with no feelings or remorse would go with that? No? Okay. So uh, they're very impulsive. This is why you see them active usually in addictions. They usually have a lot of addiction problems going on uh, in their life because they're, it's all about getting the maximum uh, feeling that they can out of every moment. And the ways they get excited are, are varied, but chemically, it's a pretty good way to get excited. There are lots of things that are available to us that we can actually do that, manipulate how we feel. And then we, they also get jazzed, uh, feel really good about, uh, like for instance, if they step on an ant, 
which they would do on purpose, that gives them a little, mm, that's great. Love that. Imagine if I could step on a person like that. Yeah. What a rush that would be. I noticed it. Oh, yeah. Can we get the mic? Yeah. I noticed it in the driving. Driving? And mm -hmm. cutting people off and feeling entitled to, you know, have the road, or people should be driving the way they're driving, or I, I'm entitled to cut this person off or be rude. Oh, yeah. Because I'm so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, what about them? Yeah. <laughs> no, they don't. That yeah. Lack of empathy. I mean, <laughs> willing to be like on the verge of danger in driving mm -hmm. because they felt entitled and impulsive. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you for sharing that example. <coughs> now, they're winners. Uh, they're winners. They love to win. They're not going to lose, that's for sure. So uh, this is where you're going to run into a problem if you try to negotiate with the psychopath. There's really no way to win a negotiation with the psychopath. It's not going to happen. They're going to win no matter what. And like we heard before, they're going to like flip stuff around back on you. Uh, whenever they can, so th it's it, they will always win, and uh, or at least that's their mission. Sometimes you know we get them imprisoned. Well, you know, the psychopath I was dealing with was in prison you know, twenty times, but to him it was like a coffee break, you know. And then he even ran all kind of scams inside the joint, so it was all right, you know. Just a whole it part of his world. He didn't even feel like he was like separated from anything. So still running his, his cons inside. And they're never wrong. Just try. Try, try, to, try to correct one of these guys, right? They're like, oh no, that ain't the way it is. Is there any examples of that? Anybody feeling that one? <laughs> <laughs> we got one? Hmm. <laughs> so. Never wrong. Stole medications from a nursing home because he's trying to keep his mother alive and healthy. Hmm. Hmm. Stealing her medications? Mm -mm. Okay, that would be a different... Just medications <laughs> that his mother needed. Uh-huh. And so he was... Interesting. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Rationalize the hell out of it oh, just yeah. to make sure that... He's not wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like these guys, like that we look at them and we go, hey, dude, you just stole that stuff from that person. That doesn't look like theft to them. They're like, oh, no, I'm doing my job. You know, I earned that. I took that from that person. That's totally what I'm here about. You know, so it's like it's mine. I actually worked for that. They didn't give it to me. <laughs> or my ex would um, steal from stores and say they have insurance for that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Holy They're not losing anything. Yeah. And plus, and that's his job. I mean, it's with like, it's like that's what the work that they do. We see that in law enforcement a lot. So you don't have to be a psychopath to play that game, but that's one of them that they play. Or they don't really need it. But yeah. <laughs> They weren't using it. It was just yeah. sitting as a, as a display item. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem. He's that was used in Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Good job. Okay. So there's different kinds of psychopaths. Let's go over them a minute here and see if you recognize any of these psychopaths. We have the abusive psychopath, the animal abuse psychopath, the child abuse psychopath, the con artist psychopath, the controlling psychopath, the criminal and psychopath, educational psychopath, elder psychopath, embezzler psychopath, exploited psychopath, financial psychopath, illicit, illicit substance abuse psychopath, imposter psychopath, and intimidation psychopath, and there's a couple on that aren't on here, which is the religious psychopath and the um, political psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah. <laughs> and of course, there are many other kinds of psychopaths besides these. Yeah, yeah. 
Anybody think of any like public personalities that fit this characteristic? Anybody want to offer one up, an example? Be- besides Trump? <laughs> Weinstein, yeah, it's a good example. Yeah, very good example in in, uh, in contemporary culture. Um, oh yeah. Anyone else have can think of Jeffrey Epstein? I don't even know who that is. Sorry, sorry to everybody who's watching live. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I take it that that guy's, you know, in the media, so. He's a really bad character. Yeah, yeah. Better off not knowing. Better off. So well, thank you. What would Hitler have been? What would it have been? I mean, imposter like for sure. Them. Yeah, yeah, he'd probably be all of those. All of, I'll bet all of those. <laughs> I bet every one of them, yeah. you know. Controlling. Yeah. Controlling. And then some, yeah. Criminal? There are some people, yeah, who are very extreme and especially when they uh, wield a lot of power, the, you know, they would have all of these. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going. Oh, I guess I had these on here. Okay. <laughs> Leadership psychopath, lover psychopath, masquerading psychopath, military psychopath, pathological liar psychopath, political psychopath, religious... I thought they were on there. Serial killer, psychopath, sexual psychopath, storyteller psychopath. Those are my favorite. (laughs) Thief psychopath, verbally abusive psychopath, violent psychopath, and vulnerability psychopath. Uh, We have like a department in our state that protects vulnerable adults from these guys. So I don't know if they do a really good job, but we do have a department in the state because um, elder people who are losing their faculties are really an excellent way to uh, support a psychopath financially because they can take everything they have. So my psychopath (laughs) that I was working with, I don't know if anybody's seen this film, (laughs) but it's a the one that I was dealing with had a lot in common with this. Every t- everybody who knows him has brought up this film and thought it was about him, but it's not about him. But, but he was really smart and clever, and, um, and I have not talked about him for... I haven't said two words about him in public, and this is the first event I've, I've ever mentioned him. And uh, these guys have new tools that they can use online uh, that help them exploit people and uh, and and this is this is my guy this is a guy that like opened my eyes to what uh, psychopathy was so uh, I actually um, testified against him and he ended up doing seven years for uh, for elder abuse uh, so for uh, he took Here's a guy in our community who, um, you know, made it through his whole life. He was kind of a, like a special individual. He's a paper carrier for the newspaper uh, his whole life. And he collected cans. And he had racked up a sizable retirement account doing that. Kind of a simple fella. And this guy was all over him and cleaned him out. So, and uh, I was witness to some of that, so I was involved in the court case. And uh, it was crazy. This guy has, he was, he was. Did he just befriend him, or what? Yeah, yeah, he became his, became his best friend. Yeah. And then his investment advisor. Yeah, oh. Oh. yeah. which is a, a common thing that he did with people. Pretty good guy. Um, He did announce his death on October 12, 2015. So um, I didn't see the body, so I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if he's still out there or not. (laughs) That's for sure. See if he twitches. 
So what are we going to do about it? Like we've been victimized, right? So what can we do? We have some little handouts here for you. <laughs> oh, good. Handouts. Yay. Hopefully this will spur a little interaction from the from you guys too cuz remember it's all about you i'm not getting much much from you guys yet so give me give me some stuff to work with thank you amy for passing those out okay so just like i read uh, i have this kind this online video that has got some traction and my intention was to make a three minute video that tells people how to deal with the psychopath it ended up being 10 minutes but in it, incredible it's incredible that in 10 minutes you can actually give people some tools and so it's been herel her heralded as one of the uh, the best out there so so I've gotten a lot of flack from trying to reduce everything to its simplest form, but, uh, but it's very effective. So these are the six steps that I suggest that's a minimum that you do when it comes to dealing with um, a psychopath. So the first thing you want to do is not have any contact with them. That is the immediate action that you need to take once you identify one of these guys. If you try to negotiate or or any other thing even uh, doesn't matter you're you're wasting your breath and you're going to get hurt more i guarantee it cuz they'll draw you back in so they can reabuse you it's th it's what they do they love it they will say or do anything to pull you back in to uh to revictimize you so no contact and no contact means what Anybody? No Block contact. Them. <laughs> Block them. Block them. Block them. Block them from? From everything. And get a protection order. Just, just protection order. I like that. Yeah. Change that. They, they actually have a no contact <laughs> order you can get. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. I think that is excellent. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't always work, by the way. Doesn't always work. No, but every Oh, you're good. Oh, you should be good. teaching this class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. That is actually one of the keys, yeah. So no contact means no contact. You might have to be in a different state. You might have to go live with your family. You might have to, you need to find a safe, sacred place that you can be in. Does anybody have an example of that besides the no protection? Or There's already the some living no out here instead of in Georgia. Oh, see, now here's someone who's moved here from Georgia to get, uh, get in a safe place. So do you have a support system here? Mm, not at this point. Oh, you do now. That's what we're here for, right? Yeah. We got you. Um, I mean, I've kind of been here about five years and keep kind of remixing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you need a support system, so your psychopath doesn't know that you're here. Right. Well, that's great. That's how you do no contact. That's a good example, right? The no contact Anyone else? might be a little harder when it's a family member, and there might be family situations like weddings. And yeah. Can you try like that again? So the no contact's a little harder when it's a family member, mm -hmm. and there's other situations where you might have to be around them, even though you can keep your distance most of the time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and it might be also hard if that person happens to be married to somebody else that you might want to have some contact with, who mm -hmm. is maybe an enabler in the situation, but. Um, Codependent, like that's, we heard that's earlier. That's yeah. a, a little harder, you know, you don't want to cut off all your family just because of the one person, yet you don't really want to be around this person. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. That's, yeah. that's a tough situation, and it'd be nice to have some tools for that. Yeah. I mean, I try to keep things about the weather, but it's not my personal family member. I married into it, so mm -hmm. it's a little easier for me, but mm -hmm. it's There's not, a, not a, so. It's called Erased Families. It's like a docu-series, and uh, if you follow that, look it up on Google it, Erased Families, mm -hmm. and okay. it helps with that kind of stuff. I don't, yeah. I have kids that chose my exes. 
Can, right, one you want you want to share that again? Uh, like er that. Erased families. It's a it's like there's a docu series and you can follow it. Um, I have three kids and my um, younger two didn't understand when their dad went to jail for a long time mm -hmm. or the domestic mm -hmm. violence. He did. They didn't understand that. So they don't like me right now <laughs> for reporting yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's helped me a lot. So oh. Raising families. Oh, very good. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good resource too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe I'll just solve it. <laughs> okay. All right. So you want to get some help, and we heard about that earlier from several people. Everybody actually sh shared that earlier, uh, that you, you want to get help is the next thing. This is not the kind of thing you can do by yourself normally, although it looks like you probably did this on your own, right? Did you have any... Uh, uh, tell us how you got out of here. I mean, you, were, you had this... Uh, you don't want to share. That's fine. I'm not sure. Um, I'm kind of. Did you get you help? Have you? Uh, do you have people that you can relate? You, are you seeing a therapist or a counselor or a coach or anything like that? It was kind of strange. Wh I should put in context. Um, I had mentioned just to a couple folks earlier that I am actually a licensed mental health professional. Uh. Yeah. And like that was part of the Trying dynamic early on when yeah. I first recognized what was going on. I was like, oh, my God, how did I not realize this? Like common. before I even got in Very this common. relationship. Yes. What the heck? Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of shame and guilt about that even. Yeah. Um, but once I figured it out and got myself out of it, I was like, OK. Mm -hmm. I need to get myself as far away as possible, mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as possible. Um, had one friend who lived out here, so mm -hmm. that's how I initially ended up out here. Oh, excellent. Um, and within a few months of getting out here, I connected with a support group out mm -hmm. here. Um, so I was doing that. Mm -hmm. um, tried going through them to get into working with a therapist but mm. oddly enough the few names that they were able to give me like mm -hmm. one person had retired one person just wasn't just providing just services to them anymore yeah. we have someone we have a name it's jennifer goodwin yeah, sure. comes from the audience i ended yeah. up finding okay. someone on my own okay who good. I worked with for about three years mm -hmm. that like was very helpful for me individually mm -hmm. <laughs> um, might not have been a good fit for everyone but for my particular situation was just absolutely great mm -hmm. um, but like I said I've just been kind of creating and recreating a network that has worked well for me I think yeah. Um, well, you're doing good. You're here and you're alive and you're still a mental health goes. professional. <laughs> you're you're helping am. people still. Um, but it's really interesting because this month tends uh -huh. to always be kind of an interesting one because this is the month that this I actually got out five years ago. Oh, really? This yeah. month. It's also domestic violence awareness month. It's also. Oddly enough, yeah. <laughs> and I while I'm not specifically working in the DV field, mm -hmm. I often end up working with folks for whom this is part of their story, is mm -hmm. that they are dealing with or have dealt with mm -hmm. these kinds of situations. So. Yeah. Good job. Well, thank you for being part of the team and sticking in there. You know, uh, it's not uncommon for mental health people to uh, be exposed to this kind of a thing and be blindsided, you know, because anytime one of these guys can con law enforcement or mental health professionals, right, you know, that is a feather in their cap. They're like, oh, I am yeah. so good. I mean, the, the person that we were dealing with, the 
person we were dealing with, it was mm -hmm. one thing to, to figure stuff out, which took a long time, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and to s start to get some distance, mm -hmm. but then to see them move on to the next family victim. There you go. And that being a child. Uh -huh. And then not, not, <laughs> not having the power to do a lot, but then, you know, um, things that I would try to do is like I'd try to talk to a teacher that might be that, mm -hmm. you know, a child's teacher or... Yeah. Um, there was a, another woman who was had a child in the same class that noticed some things and we got to talking and um, You know, we tried to warn some officials and, mm -hmm. and bring this information out and It it wasn't met with any understanding that mm -hmm. any of this could be happening it, It's just right. I don't think a lot of educators or even people in in the positions to help understand enough of they what can be going on so they you know, you end up being the crazy one when you try to report exactly. something. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a doctor's office where um, this person had convinced the doctor that this child needed medications. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> and uh, I tried to warn them that mm -hmm. this situation is not what you think it is. Right. And, you know, it, it was not. Because a zombie <laughs> cannot testify in court. That's why we got medications for that, yeah. or they, they want to take you down that path. Uh, th the psychopath I was dealing with, um, he severely beat a woman that was uh, had a little bit of a mental challenge. Mm -hmm. And when he was, so, so the police went to prosecute him, and when he showed up to court, she was so severely abused and mentally traumatized that she was in a mental institution, couldn't appeal, uh, she couldn't appear to court, so he walked. Yeah. Crazy. So, crazy. Crazy, I don't know. Ugh, what a, what a, yeah, what a world, right? Okay, so get help. Uh, and this is the one that if, uh, like, all of the people that don't know what you're going through, when you say that you're going to be quiet about it, you're not going to tell anyone about it, you're not going to cause any drama, they're like, oh, no, it's time to cowboy up or whatever, man up, you know, get an AK-47, you know, put, spread it around on the Internet. They have no idea what that's asking for because... The retribution that comes out of that, it, you don't even want to think about going there. Oh, it's good to talk big, all Clint Eastwood, you know, but, <laughs> but it's, it can be frightening. Anybody ever try not to be quiet about it and have some repercussions? Nobody want to share that one? Okay, <laughs> that's fine. And staying strong is a really important thing. I mean, you have to find your own center of gravity in the universe. You have to know that you can stand strong no matter what happens, no matter what you're, that you can especially maintain no contact and keep your support system strong while this person is trying to woo you back into the fold. So it, they don't mess around. So you've got to stay strong. And this is my favorite. Document everything. <laughs> That's the only, this is the, really the only solid tool you have. And I don't care what law enforcement has to say about it, what your doctor has to say about it. You make sure that it gets documented. So it may not make sense now in the moment, but you're going to need this someday. And it could save you from going to prison because if you try to put the psychopath in prison, he's going to try to put you in prison. So you can't just go on the things that you say. You write everything down and if, well for instance, my, my brake lines were cut because I was taking this guy on, right? So I reported it. I had a pretty good idea, you know, but it sounds like I'm a crazy person when I report that that this guy cut my brake lines, right? I mean, maybe he didn't, maybe he paid someone to do it, whatever. You know, but I was pretty certain 
that I was testifying against this guy and, and I had manned up against him and he tried to uh, overpower me and manipulate me and I wasn't going for it, I wasn't having it, you know. So, uh, so I reported it. Well, that in itself, like no big deal, but I have hundreds of little crazy things like that that happen to me all of a sudden. And they all have a police report number to it. And the police did not like taking this stuff down. They come out, oh, we've got to go out to the crazy master's house again. <laughs> that guy's crazy, you know. But I wasn't letting them leave when, without a report number. So uh, those, things, those things will come in handy. Anybody else doing that? Okay. Everybody do that. Oh, where? It, oh, here's a, here's a, a backfire. So, a documentation backfire. Well, yeah, I took my children to a guardian ad litem to a trauma specialist. Yeah. And then when the the addict came out of treatment and went and met with him too, then he got the guy convinced that I, this is a man with a long history of infidelity and mm -hmm. strategizing and triangulating, and mm -hmm. so next thing I know, the um, guardian ad litem is saying, "Well, I can't make a recommendation that the kids end up with you." And I'm like, he just came home for three months in treatment. <laughs> my husband spent six months in jail. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let's get this. Okay. I took them there for the documentation that I was doing everything in their best interest. Well, come, come back. Hold that thought. Yeah. 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 So really? my husband spent six months in jail for domestic violence after like a year of nightmare, like like 20 yeah. times arrested. And, and then his whole family, his mom and his three sisters, all filed for custody of our kids. I have nothing on my record, nothing, nothing wrong, right. like no reason for it. And so CPS was coming to my house all the time. I told them, take pictures. Like I want to open the fridge and take pictures in the pantry, like document everything. And it never, it never stopped. I mean, if you look now, now like on public record, I have a stacks of stuff that how bad of a parent I am, what a horrible person I am when mm -hmm. I'm a victim of abuse mm -hmm. from my husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Did you want to wrap that up with the, with yours about how oh, they flipped it on you? Stuff. Yeah, and thank God for Jennifer Goodwin. But yeah. really? Jennifer Goodwin. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> good, good for her. So document everything and don't be so hard on yourself, right? So it's easier. Uh, hopefully, it's easier for you to forgive yourself when you figure out that there is a, like a purpose for this. If you have suffered at the hands of a psychopath, there are other people out there suffering, you can be hugely supportive to someone else who's experienced that same kind of trauma. Like, and no one else can understand what you're going through. But you have this special gift, as uh, uh, crazy as it sounds, gift to be able to connect with someone who's really a hurting unit. So you too could be a psychopath victim recovery coach and you could get certification through St. Paul's Free University. Just to review here, here's some things, how to deal with a psychopath, no contact, keep it on the down low, get back up, protect yourself, be unshakable like a rock, preserve your reputation, be prepared for the worst, document everything and forgive yourself. I'm David M. Masters. You can see me on davidmmasters.com, and I can take any questions that you might have. While we, are we going to wrap, or what do you think? Good to go. Everybody ready to go to lunch? <laughs> okay, great. If you have any other questions, davidmmasters.com. I'm there. I got you.